Well, you just really? got over a cold. Yes. And that wasn't fun. And you got COVID tested or no? Got COVID tested. And it was just your regular old fashioned little virus. Yep. But uh yeah, it's just it's we're a month into the schooling and stuff. And it, like, look, I don't blame Bo. He's he's sick of me telling him what to do and I don't I'm annoyed and Cutter paces the house on his calls because he that's what he does when he's on the phone, he paces and like it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Yeah. I'm tired. So, and it's getting real hot. Cutter said I woke up in the middle of the night last night and I was just sat up and I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh no. I'm so tired. You're so like, tired. You have to sleep. wake up and talk <laughs> about talk how tired about you are. I uh so we started the vow, which I'm I'm de- I love cult shit. Like watching stuff about cults and Oh, that's what it is. Lo- yeah. Well it's it's Nexium, that thing that that girl oh, was is it a documentary? involved yeah. in. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. HBO, like six or eight parter. You know the Nexium, yes. you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, where they brand the women and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, I just cool. ended on that. And the girl from Smallville was like a recruiter, right? A bunch yeah. of famous girls. A bunch of them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta watch it. I don't know this stuff, but it's like this girl, Battlestar Galactica, and, and this <laughs> show. And I'm like, I don't know who these girls are, but. They you know, it's from, like, like culty shows. Weird. With these cults, and like same thing with Scientology, where they like lead you in with Dianetics. They lead you in with just some very practical, good advice. Yeah. They get you in. They're like, what is it? Well, you know, a lot of it is just like, um, I don't know. They well, hold on. I got I got seeds in my teeth. The first the okay, first we'll hold. okay the first couple episodes, I was like, I want in. You know, like the first episode. What they do right. is they. Like so, remember you said I think somebody said to you like, "What do you lose if you don't have MS?" Didn't someone say that to you? I don't know, but I like it. Yeah, well, exactly. You're in the. You're in. That's it. You're getting branded and fucked now. See, that's how they do it. Ah. Uh, yeah. So what? What they? Uh, they they do get you is, out of your own head. But they talk to you about like people are like, I can't do this thing, and they're like, Why not? You know? Yeah. And they they I forget what they call it EMS or they you know they, they like empower them right, and they just take like. They take traumas they have or whatever and they like redo it. So they're like, you know, the guy was like, oh, I got on a plane home when normally I'm terrified of flying. Oh. He's like, I was perfectly fine. And he was like, then I called back and I was like, I want to move to. They Nexium. manipulate their brains. This is all allegedly. By they the give them like yeah, little, yeah, yeah. they give them little like, you know, when uh, you get a broker and then you give them your first uh, investment and then they give you back like a small return, yeah, you know, yeah. and they're like. To show that, you know, they are trustworthy. It's like, you know, if you wanted to do this, great. If not, we got your return and have a nice day. Yep. They just get you in. And then obviously you're going to want more of this. You're going to want oh, more of like gambling. self-empowerment. Yeah, yeah. Combine that with a very charismatic leader. This is what always is gets he? me. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I watched like Dateline or 2020 on this a long time ago mm. before it's like really blown up. And I'm like, he is not. Charismatic not. to these people. And no, I think he's very smart. I don't know if he's charismatic. No, I, I would Does say. Does he have sex with all of them? I would say you have to be charismatic and then look or appear smart. You could and, just be manipulative. Like he's well, just a master all, manipulator. It's all a man- but manipulation. But to these people, this dude's charismatic. He's smart. He's like. Even if he looks like a short Kyle Mooney, which Kyle Mooney is a great looking guy, but he looks kind of like a, a goofy, you know, like oddball. But when you combine that with, oh, he's like a, a PhD in three things, rocket scientist, mathematician, he created his own math. And the way he speaks is so to the point, And he like sees right through me, this guy. And he when he talks, I'm the only person in the room. These people have that sort of like gift. It's, yeah. it's charisma. Yeah. You See, know, I think you just hear so much about him for so like you love the program. And then you hear that this guy's the leader I and see. he could show up because I've seen a lot of cult guys where I go, that guy's charismatic. Oh, I get it. I'm, I'm in. Where with him, I don't see him as charismatic at all. I just feel like he's very manipulative and he's very smart and he but he's not like to me maybe i don't know the definition of charismatic but like i i for me charismatic is like wow i want to be around that guy yes yeah well look at all these people that want to be around but they don't meet him they they go through this thing and they're already hooked and then they meet him but if and he's the leader who's the genius and well then how does he go from meeting these people then to like fucking them and like you know without him being somewhat charismatic by manipulating those women and getting them to he doesn't do any of it he gets them all to get them he gets I, them all I to get them I see what you're saying I I would say there is a level of charisma there 
when I think like of like his, a big room, knee pads? when I think of like a big <laughs> room yoga guy, just, I don't like, see during the day. No, he he plays volleyball, <laughs> and so half the interviews he's in these like shorty shorts. He's in shorts that are up to here, and these big white knee pads, and his hair's in a ponytail. And then like in between sets, he's got everyone you know around, yeah. and they're talking about you know he's doing the thing where he's like you know we're we're here to save humanity, and like, but also in between like spike in the ball, and I mean it's. I'm only on episode two, but it, it is pretty. It it, it unfolds type of stuff, very well. Like, really, physically bothers me. Like yeah. I get yeah. like a pit in my stomach just because I just think of people, and I just feel so bad for people that are so badly needing just yeah. like community and support and love, and just how easily they could be manipulated and taken advantage of, and it's just devastating to me yeah it's well you're an empath you know when yeah. you see those guys that are stuttering that he cures the stutters these guys at first are just like Tourette's or the Tourette's yeah they're like cock cock ball 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 and then and then they, they have like they show one session with the guy and then they're like yeah man I had Tourette's and uh no boy way. that was that was crazy uh now I'm a I'm a huge party animal and people love me and I talk so eloquently and and then the you know it's so it's, he's just manipulating his gift well could he possibly have a gift oh he's a very smart he's very he's smart doing guy. something and it and it's something that could be done without the you know the this community the branding that he's, and sexual assault re, absolutely uh um, is he taking money from people well you you've watched more of it i mean I'm, i think you have I mean, to I pay maybe yeah i don't want to give it away right yeah me. guys listen spoiler Spoilers. alert we're gonna talk about it uh, yeah, right away. The first f the first time you walk in the door, it's twenty seven hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. That's so a lot of money. And there are girls who are like, like they had one conversation with me, and the girls like I didn't even I barely had twenty seven hundred dollars, but I instantly they put find it up. It. Right, but here's the crazy part, right? So now when they by episode four or five, they start to reveal what's really going on. And, and I, I don't understand how. Can, I'm sorry to interrupt. No. You. How are they? How are they? How are is a stock footage that they put together in a story? So the best part of it all is the guy was going through some bad press, and he hired a guy to film everything that goes on there. It's like Tiger King. Yeah. yeah. So you're watching oh. all the real footage. Wow. It's God in... was working in a mysterious way there. Yeah. That's what makes the best documentaries is like the, the real unrestricted access to what's happening. And not even knowing what you're finding. And, and all later. the phone calls were recorded. Whoa. All, every, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So so here's here's the approach, right? Let's say here's how they get the girls. And so okay, so the, I'm a girl walking in. You're a girl. Okay. There's a regular like <laughs> cult thing or whatever that's going on. But then there's the next layer of the cult, which is a girl says to you, uh, Jamie, I have a secret that and they're all searching, you know, like super hard. Oh. They go, I have a secret that will change your life forever. It's the greatest thing you'll ever be a part of. But for me to tell you the secret, you have to give me collateral. Meaning, Meaning like goods on me. Goods on you, naked pictures. Yeah. You're going to do this one girl did a, by the way, she doesn't know what it's going to be. She does a video saying she, she loves her husband. She loves her. She goes, my husband beats my children, all this stuff, just so they could have the video of her. And they say, just in case you give up this secret, we play this for people. So we know you'll never give up our okay, secret. Okay. So what they find out the secret is, is there are masters and there are slaves and so let's say I bring you in. Now you're my slave. You have to text me permission for everything you do. So you go, hey, master, I'm going to eat uh, this meal. You take a picture of it, send it to me, and you go, it's about 120 calories. Is that okay? And I have to give you permission if you can do it or not. I'm going to get my kids to do this. Yeah. And <laughs> allegedly, the girl who was like leading it all is that girl, the girl from... The blonde one. I don't know if she was the one from Smallville, but yeah, like Allison or yes. yeah, whoever it was, like this super famous girl. And then you find out later that it's actually the dude at the top who's like fucking all these women, doing horrible things to them. And like, but I, I just. When they get to the point of the sexual abuse, do they now know that they are part of something bad and they can't get out? No. So here's what they're, they think it's part of like, so they, they brand like sacrifice. They go, you're coming to this meeting. You don't know what it is. They blindfold you. You lay naked on a table and they 
take a branding. Sounds like the Korean spa. Yeah. <laughs> they, they take a branding thing and they go, here's what we're branding into you. It's this is the sea. This is the mountain. And then this is the waves. And this is what we are. We're all together. We're and all it's the really his initials or something. Yes. And and it's like and they, and they give you, you turn to the side. It's like K R. Yeah. Whatever his initials are. Oh, fucker. And it was, yo, it, it it's, it's pretty cool. It's such a great. <laughs> it's great. Cool. I, you know, I'm. I'm I'm upset he thought of it first. Um, it, it it is like a ultimate fantasy if you are a psychopath. What? Well, let me finish the sentence. Okay. If you are a psychopath, it is, is, that, is this why you made merch back yeah. in the day with your pictures on it? <laughs> it was like his gentle way. Yeah. Um. It, it is. It is like how can I build my ideal fantasy? Mm-hmm. You know, and get every and and have complete control. And make money doing it. This guy could have had a TED talk, and I would have listened. I mean, this could this energy could have been channeled into something that's what I'm very thinking. positive, yeah. which that's is such sad. such a waste. Um, For but, sure. But I haven't made it far enough to kind of figure out like, is this guy actually like a, a PhD in all these things? How many and, episodes are there? I think it's an eight parter. I'm on yeah. episode five, but I wrote down some of the things. So okay. he gives one woman gives the deed to her home. As collateral, and now here's what happens: once you give your collateral a week in, they start going, "Hey, we need weekly collateral." Oh, so that's we know. cool. Wait, so wait, now wait, wait, wait. What these what women, these women are sending. Uh, uh, they have all your social media passwords. They have like your bank information. They know fucking everything. It's it's. I, I'm I'm watching this. I'm on the edge of my seat. For I fucking love the show. Wow. The Vow is called on HBO. The Vow. Yeah. HBO does great documentaries. HBO's been the, you know, it's, doc- been, it's been such a beacon during this pandemic. Oh, yeah. You know, like uh, <laughs> The Watchmen that came out earlier. I thought The Watchmen was probably one of the best series on TV. Lovecraft really? Country. You know what on, I got yeah, into? I, I love that. I thought, I thought The, the Watchmen Watch- was good, but not best series No, on I TV. thought it was one of the best, best seasons of TV ever made. Hmm. Put it in the bank. Ugh. The episode eight with Mr. Manhattan or whatever it was. Dr. You, Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan. That was incredible. But the rest yeah. of it, I was like, yeah, around episode like three, four, or five, I was like, okay. You know what I got into? What? Love Island. The American? Yes, the American? Yeah, just the Aww. one that was just on. Oh, my God. I love all of them so much. Moira, the girl from Hoboken, she reminds me of Carly. You know my friend Carly? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I... I don't know. I got real into it. I think it's because it, first of all, it was on every night. Yeah. And I've been so tired, like I said lately, that <laughs> I just climb in bed and I just like put on Love Island because it's always there. It's easy to watch. And yeah. like, they're, I mean, they're literally living like a big brother ish, right? They have no television, music, nothing. They're just like forced to just work on relationships the whole time. Spoiler alert Jamie is about to ruin the end of the current Love Island season. Just a heads up. Justine and Caleb are amazing. That's who won. Spoiler alert. The UK version, you have to watch. Uh, Yeah, spoiler. I imagine it's like dirtier and like. Dirtier, but also they're good people. Like you're not like. These people are good people too. But you just don't feel like they're all about like followers and I'm a a model. No, no, I don't. I didn't feel that way. Sally and Johnny. Yeah. Moira and Calvin. I really hope they go the distance. Because when I watch like Real Housewives, I love it, but I'm not like I want to hang out with these people. Where like you can watch this past season of New York depressed me. Yeah, this all it's it got all it went depressing. yeah it got it depressed me. Like, can I can I tell you something? I think back in the day, like if me and you somehow met one of these guys from the cult at a thing, and we're like, come to one of our meetings, like we'll give it to you for free. I I would have loved it. I would have been on board. They wouldn't have wanted me, but you, I think they would have got you. I don't think they would have in gotten a bad, in a bad time. Yes. Yeah, I don't think it would have gone as far as like the branding and the this because no. not every girl does that. But they would have had you oh. as like your spo- You would have been like Nexium, uh, like at the yeah. Emmys. Like, you would have been trying to get to the mic. Like I just want to say, <laughs> oh for sure, Nexium and Mark, uh, <laughs> Lord and Savior David Keith. Yes. Yeah. What's his name? Koresh. That's so sad. D- David Koresh. <laughs> can, can I pause and pee? Go of course. Pee. Pause yeah. and pee. Uh, yes, and I'll take this right. opportunity to talk about my favorite cult leaders. Uh, David Koresh, Charlie Manson, the dude that ran the thing up in Portland. And the people who make the masks at Braddock. <laughs> and the guys at Braddock. <laughs> well, you know what will really muzzle you if you're in a, if you're in, in a cult? Oh, oh yeah. Is, uh. a, is a mask. 
specifically a Braddock USA mask. Yeah. The best masks in the biz. They are affordable, reusable. They are the most comfortable, breathable, and affordable face masks available, produced right here in the US of A. They use premium upcycle t-shirt and jersey material to create super soft, eco-friendly face covers that offer protection without being a nuisance to deal with. Only masks I wear. I love them so much. And now when you go check out their website at braddockusa.com, you will see that they already have great prices, but for a limited time, they're offering an additional 20% off with promo code... PJ Pants. Again, that's 20% off your entire order with promo code PJ Pants at B-R-A-D-D-O-C-K-U-S-A dot com, BraddockUSA dot com with promo code PJ Pants. My favorite masks. Softest, best masks made in the USA. Not in China. Not in China. And uh, like they're, they're machine washable. I have one in every, I have one in every vehicle. Um, the, the, tur- the Turbo S, the 911 Turbo S, I keep one in there. <sighs> and I got one in the Tacoma, the fully long traveled uh, Baja ready Tacoma that I own as well. Mm. You should go to Tacoma. <laughs> Is that a place? You know what? <laughs> I, know what I may. I may go. Yeah. See ya. Uh, s- speaking of going places and needing internet, there are tons of VPN providers out there, and you've probably heard of a couple on other podcasts, but we like to do our research here at Pajama Pants, and we can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. Here's why. Tell them, Cass. Well, first of all, Other VPNs sell your data to third-party companies. And if you're like me, you don't want people to know what you're looking at when you're in incognito incognito mode because that is being tracked even though you think you're under the radar. Mm -hmm. People will sell your information, and trust me, you don't want that information out there. And also, other VPNs take forever. They slow down your connection speeds. Not with ExpressVPN, it's in the name, Express. Yep, and ExpressVPN developed a technology called Trusted Server that makes it impossible for their servers to log any of your info. And that's the thing that really sets ExpressVPN apart from other VPNs, and it's so easy to use. So protect yourself with the VPN that we use and trust. Go to expressvpn.com slash pajama today to get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash pajama. Pajama. One more time. That's expressvpn.com slash pajama. Pajama. To learn more. Okay, Jamie. Yeah. Here's the question. We we talked about there was a certain NFL player that came out allegedly that he wanted girls to poop on right. his on his chest or where? Did it say where? I, I mean, Anywhere? I mean, everywhere? Uh OBJ OBJ? We can say it, right? Whatever. Allegedly. It's out there. Allegedly. Uh, so let's say it's your fifth anniversary or your tenth anniversary, right? That's the brown one, and and <laughs> and he says, Cutter says to you, he's like, listen, I, I got a plot, he, baby. He does everything. He does it all. He's the best dad. He takes he it. They just sold the company. He's and he's like, babe, I just tonight, just one time, would you just shit on my chest? I love oh. how you didn't know where that was going. <laughs> 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 I'm just a good actor. Um, no, I don't want to. I have to. No, no, no. All right, all right. Just pee in my mouth. No. Which one would you rather do to him, if you had to do one? Do you think you could even? Because you know when you're in the ocean and you try to go pee and it's really yeah, cold, it's, very it's hard like to go you've got to talk command. yourself up in, into it. Yeah. Oh, I could pee anywhere. Oh yeah. Right away. Any anywhere. I'll do it right now. Good I have you. trouble at troughs. Oh yeah, I don't At like baseball that. games. Yeah, well, I, I was usually drunk when I would pee in those, so it wasn't that bad. But I, I would, I just when you is that the urinals lined up against t- the wall? No, it's one big bathtub oh. trough, and you just all you have is like it looks like this. It's dongs in the peripheral. It, it's if I'm looking here, imagine you're me. Okay, look straight forward. This is all you see. Pee- why are you at PP level? Why are they hard? <laughs> well, because you know the why are you they at go- the level of the P? Are you with giants? He's on his uh, knees. Where, where are I'm you? I'm hoping peeing? for that backsplash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and I don't like him. If if you had I to choose, you have to you have to. I have to. He's like, listen, like I took out the garbage. Choice? I got to do it. Yeah, I took out the garbage. I took out I don't the garbage. Let me shit on you, babe. Yeah. I well. Ugh, I did I my chores. Like question. No, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it happen. It'll be forever ingrained in my mind. Yeah. Like, what happens to me if I don't do either? No, what if he's like, I your, know I'm your no children fun. disappear off the face of the earth? What? Well, she has yeah. to. Yeah, so poopies? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, instead of pee. All right, what if it was poop on his chest or pee on his chest? 
Pee on his chest. Okay, but the yeah, pee in the mouth. Stung by a jelly in the fish. mouth, yeah. Yeah. Pee on him. Pee on him. Is, okay. If if Rob got stung by a jellyfish, would you pee on him to save his life? Of course. If I can make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but you're what if he got happen. stung right right here? Oh, no, I don't rough. think he would want me to. Well, you'd have to. We're on the middle of the ocean. If I'm going to die. We're on a pajama pants cruise. Come in next summer, well, 2021. Where are you? <laughs> Why can't you do it if we're on the cruise? I can't pee like Jamie, can't you're going to command. <laughs> Jamie, you're going to make Casim pee on my face? Just be standing over you just trying so hard. I would go I go pinpoint precision, you know, I'd get the little spots oh, under here, but could. we need you for that like aircraft carrier putting out a fire retardant, you know, <laughs> just like the big splash. <laughs> yeah. We have we have something very fun this week. Very okay, fun. This is a surprise for oh, me. Oh, it's a surprise I'm and very everyone's excited for gonna this. love it. Ugh. How do we set this up? Back Why in do the you day. Why doing this to me? Oh, no, it's not it's not to you. Okay. Back okay, okay. back in the day, our the guy who you were going to marry, George, decided an idiot. I mean, he's full you, of talent. You not George. We know George is. <laughs> he's full of talent. Why not try his hand at stand-up comedy? <gasps> yeah. And we have oh my gosh the video husband uh, can i can i make a um quick set this up a right? little bit what of course but i just i can't wait until jamie realizes she chose this guy this is the man <laughs> oh. Oh, when, i'm uh, already feeling for him because i just feel like stand-up comedy is so hard oh, i don't feel bad for him at all something's happening gabby's taking her shirt off gabby <laughs> what oh she's gonna oh, watch it with us you come in ladies and gentlemen uh yeah. our producer gabby I mean, you give her an inch, she takes a fucking mile, but okay, sure, come sit down. When, uh, welcome Gabby to the show. Hey, hey, yeah, this is becoming Lovely a Braddock weekly Pass. thing. <laughs> we worked at Maker Studios, that's where I met George and Bryce, and um, their roles were producers. They would help, you know, me make videos, and, and um, they were like a duo. I, George got you the job, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, George was there first, brought in another seven foot five work. I mean, they were like the two tallest guys by a mile. That's the people he pees next to. And uh, George, I was putting George in some videos and I think it was probably clear to George and other people that he he could improve in the area of oh. like on screen personality. And so, am I wrong in saying you took this class too? They took an improv class, but George took a stand up comedy class to, and you got to give it to him. He was really trying to work that muscle and become better on screen because there's a part of George that wants to be fucking super famous. It'll never fucking happen, but he wants to be famous. He wants to be respected. And um, he took a stand-up comedy class and he would invite us to go. And none of us, I mean, a couple of us went, but none of us like could bear watching Oh. It would just hurt. It would because we knew we knew him from around the office. All that fucking banter, all that funny witticisms he would do around the office. We knew that it wouldn't translate mm. to the stage, and so well, um, yeah, because you weren't there to point out why it was funny, you're right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so th that's why this is so. I haven't seen this, and and I've only heard a legend. This is yeah. a big day this for is, all of us. This is uh, this is something that I'm gonna remember for a while, and I want to thank the team, Gabby and and Bruce. It was for this, this Bigfoot and aliens, and you got. One of the three today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I'm a happy boy. Six <laughs> minutes. Oh, this is going to. Bobby be... Lee allowed him to open for him. Right. So you want to? Yeah. So uh, this All is right. this is oh, no. George opening oh, up for Bobby Wait, Lee. I need it louder. Yeah. Let's restart okay. it. Well, Thank we got to restart it because there's e every. Bob. I want to savor every. Oh, yeah. I want to see the walk. <laughs> yeah. His beard. His All beard. right. Oh. Any Tiger Belly fans in the audience? Oh. Okay, thank you. Bobby is just hoping I bomb. Uh, <laughs> um, what? Yeah, I... My hands are sweating. Uh... You could hear a fucking pin oh drop God. in I'm that room. I'm having trouble making eye contact with anybody. <laughs> um, um, there are, you know when you could feel a I drip of sweat? Again. When you I'm feel so a drip of sweat, right leave your underarm and hit your side like my love handle. Thought. You should have said DTF. Can you pause it? <laughs> it's, it's the in-betweens, right? So like if you're, if, if somebody who's a comedian, I've seen material like that go... Uh, through the mouth of somebody who knows how to use the words. Mm -hmm. But 
he not only doesn't have the confidence, but there's this in between transition between the jokes that's just so uncomfortable. You can't go from like, yeah, she's not uncomfortable. She's unfutonable. Uh, uh, Can I say? I, I, I wanted to give her the whole living room experience. Uh, anyways, uh, I think you know, I have a, the perfect analogy for what he looks like when he. As a joke, in between joke, he looks like every nerd in every teen movie when he drops his books in the hallway. Yeah. You know, when like everything yeah. falls and he's like, oh, no, he's supposed to be in class in like 30 seconds and his brain is scrambling. It's like, how's he going to? And then like some cute girl comes and helps him pick him up. He needs help. Yeah. He needs somebody out there. We're lucky to have him. Oh, just get through it. I need oh, to- you're, you're, this is your husband, Jamie. Could you imagine coming home to this? How does your, how do we, Jamie, how is, how do you feel right now? It. I can't keep <laughs> yeah, no, I we need, need to, to get through it. It's Tell so me. hot. How do you feel? I'm so upset. Sure. <laughs> She's Gabby? Upset. I, I can't. You've Gabby, seen this Gabby a bunch. Knows, no, huh? I haven't seen. This is why That's I wanted why to watch it. Oh, oh, I haven't seen it. oh okay. She, she didn't want to just I, get on camera. She's like, can I go there and watch? Listen, she could come on whenever she wants. Of course. You know you're hard up when that's what you're want. Oh, what? Um, but I did not move to LA just for the sex guys. You I moved came, on from that uh, to be an artist. Can we pause this for one second? Oh. Can I just say we are three minutes in? Can I say one thing? She was more successful than me, and I'm not just talking about she had an apartment. She had a bed that didn't pretend to be a couch sometimes. Every little laugh kills me. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, can you pause it? We got to put that on a shirt. Every little, little laugh, laugh kills, kills me. Every little laugh kills me. Yeah, right after the pickle me. walls Every waterfall shirt. Every time he got a laugh, he couldn't continue. That's, that's the shirt. Every little laugh kills me. <laughs> you got a big one there, pal. He is raping that mic stand. Oh, my God. And he's trying to do like, hey, this is what casual people. I need this to end. And know, the most don't, natural don't, bit don't, of this don't. set so far is when he got on stage and moved the mic stand. Here. That was... Yeah. Wow. He is. Okay. Put out. Fuck it. Um. Yeah, there you go. That's just a, a natural oh, I, moment. <laughs> I'm getting dry yes, mouth. They've been making fun of me in the back room. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, oh my god. Okay, pause it. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want a supercut of any word that it wasn't a word, like a uh, all the um. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. Mm. I want a super you got your cut of it. Up here, Gabby? I, Gabby, this is something I'm I'll help so you with. So uncomfortable. And by, by helping you, that was me suggesting the idea. <laughs> and also, any guy out there who's listening to this who's like, I can't get a girlfriend, I can't get a girlfriend, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about ones who really want a girlfriend and can't get one. This guy's married. Yeah. He's yeah. got a wife. Well, yeah, she didn't speak English. <laughs> She might have dealt coke back in the day. (laughs) By the way, if I didn't know... She thinks he's crushing right now. If he was speaking another language, I would know this was horrible. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's... let's He has zero ownership. Save the best for last. (laughs) (laughs) Your critiques hurt so much more. (laughs) When anybody asks me, you know... (laughs) Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm George Kibble. You he shouldn't have said his name at the end. <laughs> I'm Bryce. <laughs> oh my Ooh. God! Thanks, the, everyone. I'm Gilbert. The backbone of that entire <laughs> set was here? was where he oh, was yeah, sleeping. Oh yeah, I can't watch. Crushed. George Hiroshima and Nagasaki want their bombs back. Oh, oh man. Guys, we just showed you um, just some highlights of George's stand-up set. If you guys want to watch the full video. Go to uh, Tiger Belly's Patreon, yeah, and you can you can actually uh, you can purchase it, and trust me, it's worth the money. Um, it's a full six minutes of cringe. That's at patreon.com/tigerbelly. Patreon.com/tigerbelly. Uh, thank you guys <laughs> thank <laughs> at Tiger guys. Belly for allowing us <laughs> yeah to watch that. By the, yeah. I think there are many super cuts in there, and one is I looked over at Jamie's face during it. Yeah. yeah. 
It was the best. <laughs> I mean, if he looked into the crowd and saw Jamie's, a bunch of what Jamie's faces, Jamie be, he would have killed doing? himself. <laughs> what was he doing? You, you were like, Jamie's calling 911. <laughs> yeah. It was, wow. It, oh, yeah. um, you know, we, we shit on George a lot. Nauseous. And <laughs> I just want to say, nauseous. look, we, we shit on George so much, and that's why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Jamie, what is that? Or Gabby, what does that do for a female? Not much. No, I I just feel bad for him. I'm just like. Yeah. If you could, if you saw that and then he said, "Jamie, can you give me some advice? You're a you're a, a performer." I'd be like, "You're you are I you I you are funny." I what? Think Wait! That you, whoa! 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 No, whoa! No, I'm gonna, Bryce, I'm gonna start it over. <laughs> you clearly uh, like are have a sense of humor. However, I just don't think you understand how to deliver it. Like maybe you're a writer. Maybe you should be a writer. Maybe you should write jokes. And I think what I think scripts some have of, you been reading? I think some of those would have landed with a better delivery. That's, delivery. that's true. Mm -hmm. There was two two of them in there that could have been ha come across as somebody's like filler material. And mainly because when he, someone actually laughed at his jokes, he got so rattled. He's that, never like, heard he that before. Forgot where he was. <laughs> like what was happening? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and he should have said, "Well, she's DTF." Down, down to, to futon. futon. And yeah, maybe yeah. that would have gone... That's what I'm he's... saying. If somebody... If you put it in more capable hands, <laughs> somebody could have done Sorry, something George. with that bit. I get the bit. I get the bit. How did I get here? To the futon. I get the bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did I get here? The futon. Ooh. How are you feeling? Oh, yeah, yeah, how are yeah. you feeling, Gabby? I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 That's my boss, guys. Yeah, That's your boss. <laughs> this is kind of I feel kind of like how when you're standing outside at, during a funeral, like smoking a cigarette and you don't want to like, yeah, really have too you can't really have too much fun. Right. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like you're, you're kind of like, oh, so how's the how's how are, yeah. how are the kid? Like, how's yeah. your family? What are you guys like, doing? This... What are you doing with this car? Yeah, so I you guess this sell is, it or <laughs> this is great podcast material, I guess. Well, no, uh, that's gonna be that's gonna make good YouTube uh, amazing, and, yeah. and the audio alone, I think, speaks volumes. <laughs> yes. I, I would be willing and to if say, it's bad, Gabby, edited. you guys, I'm yes. actually nauseous. It's like, fifty percent. Really... need a break. <laughs> it's fifty percent food futon break. joke and humor, and then fifty percent. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 Bobby. <laughs> You know, that's the other 50%. It's it's just, there was a, it's six minute video. There was a one minute stand-up set in there. Yeah. It's and, a one minute deal. And Jamie said she feels nauseous. Imagine you paid for that. Like, imagine you were like, oh, $23. Where is that at? I would pay, I would pay in upwards of $40. For, right. you, you guys, if you have, if there's a part of you that wants to do comedy, I, I think you should pursue it. And at the end of every comedy class or improv class, there's generally like a, a a set that you do in front of your friends and family, and you will know right then and there whether you need to pursue. <laughs> and that was George. That was you know George had one of those, and he kept. I think he kept doing them. I think I we kept getting remind like uh, updates from George saying like, yeah, I'm going up. Uh, I'm going up this Friday. If was you guys want to come out. Oh yeah. He was nervous. Yeah, for sure. So you can tell Gabby. by the way he was fingering that mic stand. <laughs> so Gabby, would you rather shit on a guy's chest oh or pee in his mouth? <laughs> you can leave me. You're lucky you can okay. leave. Thank you guys so yeah. much for letting me Let's watch. Get, yeah, that's how you get him out. Of, that's how you get him out of the room, guys. Um, here you go, Jamie. Gabby, yeah. no bare midriffs on this show, okay? She's so cute. Oh, okay, so here's one thing I want to say. I, you know how in signs, like the the, the movie, yeah, in the movie, the yeah. kid like had asthma because the alien was gonna. <laughs> Kieran Culkin. Was that Kieran Culkin? Yeah. yeah. And it saved his life that, that he had it. I think me not having sex has saved my life recently because there was a bus, there was a raid on a house where they were, whatever they were doing, whatever they were actually looking for. They found people repackaging used condoms, 300,000 of them. Oh, yeah. I heard about what? this. How? By the way, that wasn't Kieran Culkin. It's another Culkin. Yeah. Rory? Could be Rory. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I heard that they were washing them, boiling them, and letting them dry out, and then re-rolling them up and selling them. Uh... Well, here's the thing. You're, You're having using a rough them one for the same purpose. <laughs> 
Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's what? just going back in the pee pee. It's not like it's going no. in the mouth or. But there's no spermicide. And Jamie, you don't know whose condoms they are. Uh. You're you're getting like they're they're backing up trucks of used condoms. Oh, you're oh. boiling them and you're selling Where them as they, new. They're picking them out of the garbage. I don't understand. That's what I'm saying. Where do you find three hundred? Is there like a sewer system? Like yeah. where do you find three hundred? Well, this is definitely not an American. Flush it down the toilet usually, right? Well, to- now we know what Jamie does with oh, them. Oh no, I. It's not what I do. It's what Cutter does. I take them and I roll them up into a tight ball of toilet paper. Then I put them in the trash because I think they can clog your. Uh, they don't disintegrate. Wait, you you still that. use condoms? No. Yeah. Really? Well, I'm not on birth control. Imagine having sex with Jamie with no condom. <laughs> <laughs> not even her husband knows what that's like. <laughs> yeah, no, it's rough. I hate it. Uh, to bring us to bring us back, here's something interesting. Cool. Jamie's gonna read an email. All right, this is for Cassim. Oh hell yeah. Hello, big white Italian daddy Donnie here for little boys Cassim. Just wanted to stop by and let Cassim know what I think of him. Oh God. Yeah. I am going. I don't like this. Why? Well, I'm come gonna... on, let's hear it. I'm excited. It's, hey, it's your fan, Jamie. Potentially a new candidate for me to date. Hey, I don't like any of this. I'm just prophesying. I'm going to drag him by his neck with. I'm going to read it monotone because I'm upset. Bite his neck with a dog collar into my cobweb-ridden attic. Spread his dirty, hairy, little Arabian sand stains fart flowers. Wait, wait, can you enunciate yeah, a little please, bit? please, Jamie. Can you read this? No, this my dirty, hairy, me. little what? I'm going to drag him by his neck with a dog collar into my cobweb-ridden attic. Spread his dirty, hairy, little Arabian sand stain fart <laughs> okay. Jamie, I need you to make it through. <laughs> Gabby, you want to read it? Fart flappers and sniff suck that steaming, stinky, little pink sardine puckered boy hole of his into a damning prolapse. Delicious sardine he's probably got. Hiding under those little boy fart flapper hairy cheeks. I'm going to pump air and make it pucker quiver fart my face. I don't like that. As I suck those little ass lips into a ruined, leaky, prolapse man cunt. Cassif. It's going to get his little sardine fart hole prolapsed by my big juicy Italian man lips while I blast 80s NYC Latin freestyle music in his ears. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he likes it or not, little sand monkey boys deserve a white Italian daddy. Get ready to get that bussy prolapsed baby boy. I'm coming for you. Little dog collared Arab boy slut. Thanks for your cooperation. Love white daddy Donnie, Italian daddy for little mid Eastern boy holes. Thanks, Donnie. Oh. It's a that lovely email. Dis- you guys are just trying to kill me. I didn't understand this most of it because you were I'm you were sorry. There it's was okay. uh, some great alliteration in here. You can post the text on the screen. Yeah. Because uh, let me just. I. I'm upset. It's okay. Sorry. Spread his dirty, hairy, little Thank Arabian you. sand-stained fart flappers and sniff slash suck that steaming, stinky little pink sardine puckered boy hole of his into a damning prolapse. This is uh, this is poetry, and and look, this Was seems that like a slam joke. Poetry. This is this seems like a joke, which is unfortunate because uh, it feels like the, if this was real, I'd I'd be I'd be kind of flattered. But it sounds like somebody just wanted to have fun with saying the word prolapse a bunch, and you know, if it's if it's real, let me know. I'm not, you know, I'll take flattery any from any sex. No me gusta. We have a uh, somebody keeps writing in like on our Instagram and everything saying his name is Neil and that he keeps sending emails and we can't. Oh, here it is. Uh, oh, sorry, Neil. <laughs> Anything else? No, I'm just kidding, Neil. Here, <laughs> we finally got Neil's Neil's, fucking email. Well, whose email was that? Hi, my name is Neil, and I found your podcast through the comedy section on Spotify when I was looking at things to listen to on a run, not The Sopranos. I have never seen that show, but now I feel like I have to watch it to relate it to this podcast. My question is, do you think fame is a blessing or being rich is a blessing, or are you over being famous now than before? Rob, if you want to DM me, I have questions. My Instagram is... Anyway, I love the pod. You guys are so funny. Hello from North Carolina. I don't look I think here's the thing I think with fame and money is it just comes with more stuff it comes with more like life stuff and it's the price you pay I think you can have a much simpler life I don't think one 
what I wish we could take off the equation is one, you're a better person because you have the fame or money than if you don't. I think if we take that out of the equation, we could really just see it for what it is. Do you know what I mean? And just that you have to sacrifice some of your privacy and people know your business and you don't, sometimes you don't know what your schedule is like and you have to sacrifice things and being away from your family yeah. and this and that for money and fame. And a simpler life, you know what to expect. It's probably less stress. You go to work, you come home, you forget about it. You make your money and you do your thing. Like, I think if we could just take out that famous people are better because we're not, we just have access to more, but we have to lose a lot more sometimes. Right. I do consider it a blessing to have those things. It's a blessing for sure. But you're absolutely right. You know, it doesn't mean that you're a a better person. Um, But to me, I, every time I get into my Porsche 911 Turbo S, I look up, I look up and I go, thank you, Papa. This is a blessing. You know, every time I come home to the house that I paid for in cash. For sure. Oh my God. You know, I go, thank you, pop up. I look up and I say, thank you. To me, it's more the access you have to like health care things and like, you know, yeah. stuff. We, you can have more access to things that you need. But that's where charity should come, right? For people that can't afford yeah. something that they might possibly need, that's when people who have money need to give that money to help the people that sure. need it for something important. Yeah, just like our president, you know, yeah, a president God. he put up he put up seven hundred fifty dollars in, in his taxes, so that's that's more than enough to take care of. That's a nice necklace. <laughs> <laughs> what about your? Uh, I heard the your guys the bachelor is allegedly stalking allegedly stalking a girl. Do you know about uh, that? Well, okay, oh, so um, you're referring to Cassie and Colton. I don't know. I don't watch it anymore, but. Well, um, I'm not super tapped in at the moment, but up. tapped in enough to know that they did break up. Right. And apparently she had to file a restraining <gasps> order against. And, and you guys know, Colton is the fence jumper from the uh, from like two, three seasons ago. He's the fence jumper and he's the blonde football player, the virgin that they had. And he ended up picking this girl, Cassie, who is a smoke show, by the way. Smoke show. Really smoke cool. Show. Really, co- really cool. Um, and apparently they didn't get married, but they've just kind of been together, but recently broke up. And she had to file a restraining order because I guess he's just kind of crazy. That's can't let her go. Can't let her go. He's like kind of stalking her. But uh, I don't know specifically what he's done, but enough to where she's had to get a court order to keep him away. And this girl. New season of Bachelor coming out soon. Yeah. This guy could get pretty much any girl he wants right now. And he's stalking this girl. She must be dynamite. She's really, she's probably one of the most beautiful women they've had. What's wrong with Rob. your neck? Is your <laughs> neck okay? Or? Should be good for Rob. Oh. Yeah. Her? Yeah. Please. Are you talking to her? Well, I'm like, you know, pretending <laughs> that she's watching. Hey. <laughs> Kathy. Rob, I think. Hey. Dude, that'd be so cool if you dated her. I would, yeah. wa- I would accidentally walk in on you guys fucking all the time. Mm. On accident. I think she'd be great for you. I think we should really? slide in. We, you should slide in. To her DMs. Should we have her on as a guest? We should have her. You should have her as a guest. No. Well, I, don't, just, I don't like this. Let me show you a picture of her. Uh, stall. Yeah, I, I, remembered, I remembered a story the other day that makes me cringe. It's probably like one of the most embarrassing moments in my life. Definitely. We should talk about that. But uh, yeah, I'll look at it later. That's okay. not good. Uh, let me, can stuff. we bookmark this for later? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have, I have well, too. I think got a we lot should. Of followers. So take this oh, time yeah. to think about what's the most embarrassing moment of your life. <clears throat> Cassim has a lot, I'm sure, but maybe get off the phone, Cass. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure, for sure. Doing. Oh man, she know, looks you great. First. You want to you want to know what? It's unreal. Yeah. One of the ones I had is uh, I was in line in seventh grade and um, waiting for food, and one of the, I was in seventh grade, there was an eighth, there was a seventh and eighth grade intermediate school, they called it, and the very there was a very cool kid from the upper grade in front of me, and for whatever reason, he he like jumped, and uh, he landed, and then I said, ouch, even yeah. though he didn't <laughs> touch me, but I said it like he landed on my foot or something, yeah. he's like, I didn't touch you, Oh, wow. Uh... And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we got to bleep that, but it was one of the most, it's one of those things that I think about at night a lot. Isn't it weird? Those like 
memories. Yeah, yeah. I still know his name. Is I even came across him on Facebook the other day. It's like people you may know, and it's like this guy. And I was like, I, 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 I shuddered a little Oof. bit. I was like, do I? No. And just kept going. You know what I mean? I would love for him to see how successful I've become. But no, I won't. But it was it was one of those things that it was just it was really rough that day. And he told he told like in that vicinity he was like this this thinks I I stepped on his foot and I didn't. And I was like, yeah, I'm the I'm a everybody. You know, it was one of those just uh, super cringy. And that's how he became rich. Yeah, you showed well, that'll him. Do yes. the, that'll do it. That'll uh, do it. So I was I was f- real fat like when I was like eleven like almost two hundred pounds I was I was like two hundred pounds, and so at our school when the whole school let out everybody just it was a New York City street and everybody got they like would I don't know if they shut down the street or not I think maybe but they put uh, everybody would come out onto that street and. We're standing there and we would meet over by like the side entrance and we're all standing there and we're laughing. And one of my friends who turned out it was my friend Malik came from behind me and he pulled my hood like over my head to be like, oh, guess who it is or whatever. And I went to like take off my hoodie really fast. But not only did my hoodie come off, my T-shirt also came off and the entire school was standing there and like 200 pound pale Robbie was standing there with his shirt off. Oh. That was that was not fun. Uh, yeah, I remember that a as a moment. Point. But then did anyone slap your belly or anything like this? No. I didn't that would have been worse. take shit back in the day like you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. slap me guys. I uh um, watch me jiggle. But uh, something that happened that was so I think about like you said at night sometimes I'm like, man, this is so cringy. I so I was hanging out I, when I was would go upstate with my dad when I was like 16 or whatever. I would hang out with people who were older, like mm-hmm. in their 20s, and we'd go and we'd smoke weed and we'd drink. And one time, my dad's wife's family was over. And one of the kids, I was like, yo, if you want to go, we're going to like go hang out and drink or whatever. And he's like, okay. And he comes with me and he has like a beer or whatever. And I'm like, oh, have you smoked weed before? And he's like, oh, like I, I think like once or twice, but it didn't really do anything to me, you know? I'm like, okay. So we're everyone's smoking weed and I see him take the hit of weed and he just blows it out. And I'm like, oh, well, you have to inhale. Yeah. You know, you didn't inhale. And, and so he inhales, he gets high for the first time. Uh, so I'm now like a week later on my AOL instant messenger pops up and it's his name. Let's say his name is like uh, Frank Smith. So it says Frank Smith wrote you a, a message and he's like, hey, what's up? Like, good good seeing you last week or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, uh, we start talking, whatever. We have a full on conversation and I'm like, you know, the reason why you never, like you got high for the first time. How was it? Like how was I didn't, I don't know if I saw him the next day, whatever. And we have a full conversation about like how he got high for the first time, like this. Now, what I didn't realize was his dad he was a junior. He's also named Frank Smith. Oh. His dad was also named Frank Smith. And I just had a full conversation telling his father, like, detail by detail. Like, yeah, you know, when you, when, like, when that girl told you to inhale, like, that was it. When you smoked weed before and it really worked, that was your first time. And then when we were drinking and, and we were racing the cars on the highway. And I just gave his dad. All of it. The full, yeah. And I remember, like, when... I figured it out. I could still feel that horrible feeling, and I don't. I I was never able to like really talk to any of them. Yeah. Ever again. I get it. Like it was just. You just so... stopped talking to them. Well, they were luckily they were members of my dad's wife's family, so I didn't have to see them too often. Yeah. But when I would, it wasn't that thing anymore of like, hey, what's going on? Like I just felt yeah. horrible. Yeah, that's a rough one. Yeah. You know, that's an easy one though. Yeah, it's just. It's not really your but fault. But also when you're a kid and you're telling someone's dad about them smoking weed, like his dad would never think this kid would smoke weed. Like he was, uh, right. did right. he, do you, do you know what happened? To I don't, him? I didn't ask. Well, I didn't let's get whatever. him on the pod. Let's have him call in. What do you have most embarrassing? Um, mine was like in like sixth grade. I, well, it's just one of the ones that sticks out. I remember, <clears throat> I remember exactly what she has said, which is really weird. There was this girl a year older and in that time, like, the the mean insult to call another girl would be a Jap, which is a Jewish-American princess. Yeah. Like you're a, she's a Jap. She's a Jap. Really? Never and heard of that. Wow. 
this older girl, her name was Confusing. Maggie. Like, I think I might have like looked at her in the hallway because like I thought she probably looked so cool. Do you know what I mean? And they came down to the sixth grade hallway. She pushed me against my locker, got in my face with her finger, and she goes, listen to me, you fucking little Jap. You look me up and down one more time, and I'll bleep, beep you to a bloody pulp. And she just, like, walked away with, like, all her friends behind her. I remember, like, my face got, like, so red. And I just, like, walked into my classroom and just started bawling. And my teacher's <laughs> like, are you okay? Do you need me to call the principal? I was like, no, no, please don't tell anybody. And then one of the older boys, because, like, the older boys liked me, like, called me on the phone, at, like, when I went home. And he was like, we're going to talk to Maggie. That wasn't cool. I was like, I would never look her up and down, I swear. Like, I would ne That was, like, the worst thing you could do was, like, look somebody up and down. I was like, I would never do that. They're like, we're going to talk to her. So all the boys had, like, a talk with her. And the next day, she, like, apologized. And then all of a sudden, she was, like, my best friend. Be like, I love this little sixth grader. As if, like, being, you know, a year older was, like, made you that much superior. But I remember it was just so traumatizing to me. I don't know if it's embarrassing more than just traumatizing. That's a hell of a move for somebody to pull on somebody. You yeah. know what right? I mean? That's, like, right out of, like... So aggro. Putting someone up against 12. the lockers, like, listen here, you want an Uncle sandwich? You gotta give me all that lunch money, brother. You 100%. Know? Who does that? Maggie. Fucking Maggie, huh? She was threatened by you. Fuck yeah. Man. In our in little our, Jamie Sigler, what did she call do? into the pod? <laughs> in our last episode, you asked Cass, I'm like, oh, do you know your sexy number? Like, how many people he had sex oh, with? Oh yeah. Do you know yours? Yeah, it's under twenty. Okay, what was it before before you got when you got married the first time? Oh, um, give me a second. Today's episode is brought to you by five? how many people you've had sex with? Five. She so had sex with five people and got mad, and you're like, I'm done. That's I enough have no dingles idea for what me. I was doing. Wow. No, that's just. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So under twenty. Okay. I find that respectable. Under twenty. And how many? No, those... just the five. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh for well, sure. that was at that was at twenty one years old. Clean. And you were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you were what sixteen when you lost your virginity? Yeah. So like once a year. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. If you wanted to spread it out. Would you would you ever <laughs> would you ever want to talk about what really happened in your first car accident? In, in that what? yeah, you were sucking. We could bleep his name out. You were sucking him. No, it is, it no. is the fucking greatest story. You might have to tell it because I don't know if I remember it that well. Well, what do you remember? I I actually don't remember much. I remember he was driving. And then when he crashed my car, he switched me into the seat. Whoa. That's it. Yeah. But it Whoa. Was a, it was a really bad accident, right? Yeah, we were in a tree. This is your husband? No. No, no. Like no. a terrible. Oh, I forgot him. It was six. But what? You forgot like your first love? He was my first nightmare. He was not my first love. You love. You were all about him. I was obsessed him. with him because he treated me like crap. Right. He, he treated like, me great. Of course. of course. He would always have pills and weed and make Ugh. sure you bleep that name. Sounds like a great guy. Yeah. So, okay. So let's let's go. Well, do you remember that night? What you were doing? What? No, let's paint a picture. No, I don't. I remember. Like, I didn't do anything then. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke weed. Nothing. And I had a little BMW sports car. I was Sopranos well, was in like second kind? season. A 325i. And okay. he drove it fast and it skidded and we went into a tree and like we were fine. We weren't hurt. But like he just like got out and dragged me and put me in the front and got in and was like, you can't fucking tell anybody I was fucking driving. And I was like, okay. Wow. Uh, I'm so, A, I'm sorry that happened to you. Were you injured? No. B, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Did cops come? Yeah, and of course. Were, were they like, and what happened? And did you go along with it? Yeah. Where, and you I said, I was driving? Yeah, And so you it. just, you knew what he was doing? And it wasn't were... like a f crazy wreck. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I said I skidded. I'm sorry. And was he on probation or something? I or... think he was in trouble for something. Yeah. I think he had bit gotten in trouble for something. Gosh. He was a bad boy. He was like my bad boy relationship yeah. that I had. Yeah. How else did he treat you like shit? He was cheating on me the whole time. And like oh. anytime I would ask, he would gaslight me and make, you know, make me feel crazy. Um, and did he get to have sex with you without a condom? No. Oh, that. yes, he did. Not that Come age. on, Jamie. Are you crazy? Not that age. Really? All no. of my sex at that age was no condom. <laughs> 
No. I was oh, so young. I was man. 18 years old. What? That's when it's the best. Because you know everyone's, everyone's clean. That's when it's the soft. I wasn't on birth control then. Oh, man. You got to just. I was not going to get pregnant. You got to let him shoot up the club, as they say. Well, his loss. Wow. Yeah, I'd say. I don't have any regrets. Let's have him call into the podcast. We got Frankie, we've got Maggie, and we've got. Donnie bleep. Daddy. Yeah. And Donnie Daddy. Bleep. Donnie. Oh, yeah. Should My we bleep new everyone's name? <laughs> yeah. No, I used a fake name. That's right. Uh, all right. We'll do one more. And then how long? All right. We're good on time. Hey, Rob, Jamie, and Kassam. YMH fan here, who is now a big pajama pants Hey, Hitlers. I love how seamlessly Rob and Jamie both fit into the YMH world. One of their best episodes with you as guests. You both seem like seasoned guests on the show, and you must do more episodes with Tom and Christina. I'm e- emailing you because I laughed so goddamn hard during your most recent episode. Might I suggest some merch you can all sell? I need a Pick a Walls Waterfall Slam poetry shirt. Love the show. Keep up the work. Keep Are up you the good there? work. Brad from Maine. That was... Uh... Are you there? That would be my vote for first so piece of merch. That was so good. Quick, we got real quick. A couple of Lindsay right. Dover emails. Lindsay Dover. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let hey, me Cass, set this up, Just last. heard the show and use an online site I've used in the past and think I might have found some info on Lindsay Dover for you. Best of luck in your search, bro. Okay, so he's got a people search. thing to people search. Thanks to all the private investigators. Uh, this yeah, thing. this is very cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, I was obviously telling a story last episode where I um, was in fifth grade and dated a sixth grader named Lindsay Dover and had to break up with her. Uh, at Universal Studios in Florida. It's another true people search. She's one year older than Cass, and she lived in Kissimmee, Florida. That could be that could be there the she one. Is. Uh, Gabby, go ahead, pull that up. He loves to bark orders. Yeah, Gabby, he's a tyrant. Uh, I'm t- uh, the one from Robert. I'm gonna need that true people search. Pull it up, and I'm gonna have to do that thing where you remember what they looked like and then age them. Yeah, you know, yeah. and then you could put her and your picture in together in that app and see what your kids would have looked like. Oh, is there an app that does that? I'm sure. If not, bleep that and we'll make one. Uh, I really appreciate You know, it's so thoughtful. The, the people sending emails, so thoughtful. Looking out. You know, the, the guy that wants to suck my farts and then these people that are uh, sending me, you know, <laughs> clues about possibly my ex-girlfriend. This is great. Well, thanks love for our, that's an everyone. episode. Thanks for listening. We're sorry about that George oh, stuff, but we I just had to. to... I, got a, I got some plugs. Go. Uh, we have a we have a pajama pants Reddit that uh one of the listeners is it still going? Made. Oh, by it's... the way, uh, you think you made it when you got a Reddit, and then you look at the top and they spell your name wrong. You could spell Garabibi, but you can't spell Eiler. How did they wow. spell it? You guys got to make this up. Oh, you guys got to make this up to Robert on the subreddit. You're dead to me. R slash pajama pants podcast. Um, I want to also thank, we got some uh, listener art. Somebody made us oh, some yeah. art. Oh, yeah. And um, I so think it would good. be very cool if any of you guys are actually out there that are um, artists and you and you feel like, ah, uh, we, we've had uh, one girl that's made us uh, a couple Instagram stories that the pickle walls um, moment that we had, she, she, she had a picture of Rob as a beatnik <laughs> sort of poet. <laughs> and... Um, uh, I want to give her a shout out, but also and you in the backless dress. Me in a backless oh, yeah. dress. She did. Hillary Swank. Um, that was great. And also, so let me get her name since we're talking about her at the moment. And, and also, Kasim did a podcast called Big Mood, which Bryce and Gabby and maybe George does. He is George part of that, or he just does Tiger Billy now? Uh, oh, actually, you know what? They might not want me to attach George's name to to their yeah. podcast after, after this episode. Today, so, let's detach. Yeah, let's just say it's Bryce and Gabby, and uh, they film right over here. We're looking at their set right now, and uh, just go check out Casim on yep. Big Mood. Uh, for those of you that watched uh, YouTube or watch YouTube, uh, Nikki Limo and um, some of her friends host a very cool all female podcast. Um, that I was lucky enough to be a part of. Thank you for having me on that show. And I did a couple podcasts, uh, Daily Dose of Wood, Chicago Brawl, a couple, couple things. Sports? Yeah, a couple sports, just fun, you know. Rob just, with the sports, guys. Just fun stuff. Um, we we love if you guys would, if you do listen and you want to support us by showing that we actually have people that listen to us, you can go support those podcasts and let them know we sent you. And rate us on iTunes. Man, we got a lot. We, yeah. Well, that's good. iTunes Rate ratings are very important because they- um, They move you up, right? They move us up the charts. Yeah. And we're on our way up. Yeah. We're we're on the lists. Um, big shout out to Heather on uh, Instagram. She's the one that's been making oh, the so Instagram good. stories. H-C-W-I-N-S-C-101 is her Instagram handle. 
And then big shout out to Christian Tremors, who made some art for us that I'm going to put on our Instagram. Um, it's a very fun sort of goofy style that I like, and uh, he was nice enough to send us a few pieces there. So thank you guys. And if you have anything you want to send us, you can Instagram us or email us at askpajamapants at yep. gmail.com. Good? Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.